What does Netflix, Unilever, and the Bank of America have in common? Nothing too hard. It's the man whose life we'll be looking at today. Strife Masiwa. Zimbabwe's first billionaire in US dollars. He has sat on the boards of this important organization and still sits on many more. In 2011, the Times of London named him one of the 25 leaders of Africa's renaissance. In 2014, Fortune magazine named him one of the 15 most influential business leaders in the world. And he was cited as one of the top 100 most influential Africans by the new Africa magazine. He is known to have a penchant for charity and an unapologetic Christian. He is easily one of the most influential men alive today. Join us as we focus the spoiler on one of Africa's most illustrious sons. Saif Masiwa was born in Zimbabwe on 29 January 1961 and from an early age he was not spared any of life troubles. When he was just 7 years old, his family had to flee from his native Zimbabwe following the chaos that emanated from the unilateral declaration of independence from the British government by the then Prime Minister Ian Smith. The Masiwas moved northward and settled neighboring Zambia. It was there that Strife completed his primary education. Zambia made sense as a refugee for the family because his father was a miner and Zambia was famed for his copper mines. His mother was an entrepreneur whose business blew some so much that Strife's father quit the mines and joined the family business. By the time Strife was 12, his family could afford him a European education. They sent him to Scotland where he completed his secondary education in 1978. Upon completion of his secondary education, he returned back to Zimbabwe and offered to join Robert Mugabe and Joshua Nkomo's anti-government guerrilla force, but was told, however, that the war was almost won. And when the country needed rebuilding, to look up to people like him to help build it. He took this advice and returned to school in Britain where he backed a degree in electrical engineering from the University of Wales in 1983. He worked briefly in the computer industry in Cambridge, then returned to Zimbabwe in 1984, hoping to help the country recovery following the end of the Rhodesian Bush War and the Universal Franchise election in 1980. After returning from the United Kingdom, Masiwa joined the Zimbabwean Post and Telecommunications Corporation as a senior engineer. He quickly moved up the ranks at ZPDC and was eventually appointed a principal engineer. He resigned in 1988, then went to establish an electrical contracting firm, Retrofit Engineering. Shrive Masiwa was able to start Retrofit Engineering from a savings of $75 monthly. In the span of about five years, Retrofit became a huge success story. Masiwa did not stop to savour his success. He saw an opportunity in the telecoms industry and with the emergence of cellular telephone across the African continent and delved into the industry, forming his own telecommunication company and naming it Econet in 1993. This is when his tribulation started. For Econet to survive and do business, there was an obstacle that had to be crossed. State-backed monopoly. Who was he up against? The same government he had so willingly offered his life after the completion of his secondary school. The government was led by yours truly, at Mugabe. When he suggested a joint venture with PTC, his former employer and national telephone company, its bosses refused, saying that there was no call for mobile telephones in Zimbabwe. Masiwa, ever resilient, decided to go at it alone, which at the turn out was the best decision, but it required courage at that time. But before he could see the fruits of his decision, he had some fights to fight and some rivers to cross. At every turn, his company, Econet, was frustrated by the Zimbabwean bureaucracy and corruption. Every African knows the trouble that comes with battling anything in the legal system. To make matters worse, Strife was involved in a long legal battle with the Mugabe-led government. You see, Robert Mugabe's government is remembered for its strong-handed tactics. That battle took much more than time from Strife Masiwa. It took both energy and it cost money. It almost rendered him bankrupt. The legal battle spanned five long tumultuous years, with the case moving from the High Court through the appellate and then finally to the Zimbabwe Supreme Court. As Providence will have it, the Supreme Court in an unprecedented verdict ruled in favor of Strife Masiwa. The monopoly was ordered off by the Supreme Court that the ruling meant he could establish his own company. Econet was granted a license to provide cell phone services in Zimbabwe. Following the ruling at the Apex Court, Econet connected his first telephone subscriber in 1998. Within a few years, Econet was able to spread its operation within and outside Africa, establishing cell phone networks in Nigeria, Lesotho, Botswana, Rwanda, South Africa, New Zealand, Bolivia, the United Kingdom, and many others. Following the success of Econet, 
he will go on to start Cassava Technologies, which envisions a digitally connected future for every African. As of December 2022, Econet Wireless Zimbabwe had 14.9 million subscribers, 9.9 .9 million active subscribers in Zimbabwe alone. This is incredible, especially when you remember that Zimbabwe is a country of 16 million people. At heart, Strive Masiwa is an entrepreneur, and an entrepreneur is a person who solves problems. Wherever he sees problems, he jumps on them and attempts to solve them. Masiwa has been involved in supporting a diverse range of health issues including campaigns against HIV AIDS, cervical cancer, malnutrition, Ebola, and more recently, COVID-19. He's an avid environmentalist. He took over from the former UN Secretary General Kovi Annan, the chairmanship of AGRA, an organization that supports Africa's smallholder farmers. In 2019, he stepped down from AGRA and now serves as Chairman Emeritus. With a net worth of $1.8 billion, Strife Masiwa is definitely one of the richest Africans alive today. In fact, for many years, he was the richest man in Africa. What has he used his wealth for? Well, this will blow your mind. Strive Masiwa has provided scholarship to more than 250,000 young Africans within the last two decades. 250,000 young Africans. In times of disaster, you can be certain to see Strive trying to offer some help in every way that he can. In January 2020, aid for Zimbabwe's doctor to return to work after they went on strike to get paid. Masiwa agreed to pay each doctor a subsistence allowance of about $300 and provide them with transport to work through a fund he set up. Most of those doctors went on strike were earning less than $100 a month. When historians write about the greatest Africans and the greatest entrepreneurs from Africa, Strife Masiwa will be among the top. In the Rockefellers and the Carnegies of America, Strife fought battles and he won most of them. He fought against principalities and powers and he conquered. His greatness precedes him. What can entrepreneurs learn from Strife? Number one, determination. Guys, ideas are not lacking, but determined people are lacking. When Strife invited his friends to set up the savings so they can start a business, just 10 of them agreed to participate. When it came to contribute money, just two of them contributed money. And even before the business became a success, the other guy left the business. You see, life rewards the determined. The determination of Strive Masiwa shines all through in all his battles against the government of Zimbabwe. The battle against the government of Zimbabwe lasted for more than five years. But Strive was determined. He stayed through it and eventually he won. The second lesson we can learn from Strive is love for numbers. Strive always says that you cannot grow what you cannot measure. He knew the numbers of his business very well. He knew every metric that counted. Until date, when you read him, you see his love for numbers. Metrics are important. The third lesson is passion is key. We see the passion in Strive's work. When time came to publicly release Econet, some partners recommended that Strive list it in the UK or in the US. But he insisted that he would list it in the Zimbabwe stock exchange. He wanted the people of Zimbabwe to benefit from this business that he has established in Zimbabwe. He loved his continent. He loved his people. He loved his country. Lastly, start small. Strife once said on Facebook, For me, nothing has really changed in terms of those basic principles. You start with what you have, you do what you can, you invest what you get so that you can do bigger and bigger things. Big visions often require humble beginnings. Start small. Strive started with $75. Today he's worth nearly $2 billion. So guys, whatever idea you have, go and start with what you have. Begin with what you have. Start where you are right now, then grow from there. Till I see you again. If you enjoyed this episode, kindly subscribe and share. Check out our next episode. Thank you for listening.